In the tunnel. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. You're listening to In the Tunnel. Hello and welcome to In the Tunnel. My name is Sean. And I'm Jeremy. And today we're doing a fantasy football rundown. It's fantasy football season and we are here to somewhat guide you, or not guide you depending on if we were in the same league as our listeners. Uh, so we're going to get into it, but it's a, it's an episode that we've been looking forward to for a while now. So let's get into it, Sean. Yeah, so... um. I think the first thing we want to talk about is, like, your sure to drafts, like, basically your top players. And I really believe that as far as top players go, you have, like, I don't know, Gurley and Elliott for running backs and then Sean Watson as a quarterback that are, like, if you see them, take them. What do you think? Yeah, um... I, you know, I, I kind of differentiate between the must-haves being the obvious choices like uh, an Elliot or a Gurley or um, a Bell. And I was going for more of, like, players who would be there at, like, spots 8, 9, 10, etc. Like, late uh, first, early second, maybe even third rounders. Um, but, yeah... I think it goes without saying, if you can get a, a Gurley or a Bell or an Elliot, go for it, as long as they're not serving any suspensions or hurt right now. But, uh, you know, my list, I had Deshaun Watson and Alex Collins running back for Baltimore because, uh, you know, uh, for Alex Collins, it's a scheme fit. Like, he's number one on a depth chart for a team that likes to run the ball. And for now, still only as Joe Flacco as their quarterback. And Deshaun Watson, if he's healthy this year, I mean, we saw what he did last year. He's a, a really good yeah. dual-threat quarterback. So I really think it, he's going to break out. So Yeah, I, I think, it, and he did last year, too. It's just a, a question of if he'll uh, be able to be on the field a lot. There's something about... Uh, playing for the Texans that star players seem to get hurt a lot you yeah. know, a lot JJ Watt but uh, we'll see how it goes yeah uh, yeah but as far as like you know your most of the first rounds in leagues are going to be drafting running backs because they just seem to fly off the shelves uh, so let me ask let me ask you a question do you go Running back first in most of your leagues, or do you go wide receiver first? Or, do, or are you that surprise person who throws in a quarterback in the first round? No. Um, depending, if I have a later pick, I'll pick a wide receiver first. Because I think that the difference between early second round and late first round is non-existent, like fairly non-existent. Mm-hmm. And, because most leagues do a snake draft. Actually, I think all leagues do a snake draft. So, Unless your auction, yeah. Um, but I'll pick the wide receiver first, and if I'm a later pick in in the first round, yeah, I go wide receiver first most of the time. Even if I have like the number one overall pick, just because um, you know, while the stats in terms of uh, being able to put up ten plus points, a lot of receivers will do that on a con- or on a near consistent basis. Your opportunity to get the receiver that. Uh, has most chances of like breaking 20 30 points a week is uh the ones that you can get at the beginning of the draft and you don't really get those with mid-round guys so i I like to go wide receiver first just because they bust out and then you know if you're in a ppr league that kind of justifies it even more oh yeah definitely although Uh, it does the same thing for a running back too yeah because i mean i just think that if you don't take a running back in like the top two 
you're kind of just taking a huge hit in points. Oh, well, it's worked for me over the past six, seven leagues. But, uh, you know, to each their own. It, it works differently for, you know, depending on how many teams you're in, uh, what kind of scoring system you got going on. So, yeah, as long as you're not the weirdo who chooses a tight end in the first round. Yeah, because okay. I mean, even because even Gronk wise, like well, e- yeah, because really you don't see quarterbacks going to like late third or the fourth round, right? Because a lot of quarterbacks are capable of doing the same thing. Yeah, but I think like there are three really good quarterbacks, and then like you can wait to like the sixth or seventh round. Mm-hmm. Um, and then tight ends is like, what are you doing if you pick them in the first round? They don't. Most of them don't generate enough points to warrant it. Right. The only ones who do are like a Gronk or what, used, think, to be, what used to be Jimmy Graham. But even then, like, you know, injury concerns plague them enough to, like, not warrant it. Yeah, but I think Gronk is the only one who could even be considered this year. Right. But I'm talking like Saints, Jimmy Graham. Yeah. I mean, back then, back yeah. In the, yeah, back in the day. Um, but, yeah, I... There's a number of different ways to go. It's just that, I don't know, it's it's tough to have any set one way will work better than the other way. Yeah, you just got to look at how your board is going and make the decision. Exactly. Balance is key. Definitely. And then you can always fill in, like, categories where you only need one you know, player at each position later. Yeah, and also, it depends on, like, how many bench you have and how many you want to keep, right, right. for a certain mm-hmm. position. Because if you're in a short bench league, then you're going to be making a lot of ad drops anyway, so you don't yeah. know how much these bench players are going to hit you, so you take, like, one of every position player most of the times pretty early. Yeah, exactly. And what I don't know what the standard is, maybe six for, like, a bench uh, six players, something like I've that. Played maybe six four. between, yeah, but like maybe somewhere between five and eight, probably yeah. a standard. So usually around six, I think. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I've been playing like short bench leagues, so like when you only have four on the bench, it it gets pretty tough. Who do you want to keep? Who do you have to get rid of? Right, but the free agency pool is deeper. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, it's okay with that in mind. I mean, it also depends on the number of teams, right? Because if you have a 16-team league, your free agency pool is shot no matter how many bench players there are. All right, well, let's just get this out of the way right now. Don't be in a 16-team league. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be that dude who's gripping at, like, the fourth string running back for the Saints trying to get points thinking that you're going to squeeze out a victory. Yeah. Find some other friends and form, like, a 10-team league. And, like, make it more competitive. Definitely. It's yeah. not worth being in a money league because 16 teams in a money league, you know, somebody's getting a lot of money and uh, a lot everybody else is a loser. So, and they feel like a loser. Yeah. But because I mean, their team is going to suck either way. I always you can think win those leagues and be a loser. I always think that, like, 12 teams is the max. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 12 teams is definitely the max. You got to be able to make ad drops that are something that's going to help you each week, not like, well, Your ad you drops know. have to be relevant. Right. You don't want to pick up guys hoping that they're going to, you know, return a punt for a touchdown. You should, like, there should never be a point in time where more than half of the defense special teams are picked up. Yeah, exactly. Unless. No. There is no unless for that. That's trying to find some a, a little loophole, but there is none. Yeah, because like you just pick up one for that bye week, and then you drop it the week later, and there's no way that in a 12-team league that you have five... Well, there could be, but you have five players looking for a bye week defense special teams. Are you kidding me? Well, it's also... There's just not that many like top-tier uh, defenses that are worth keeping on your bench during a bye week either. Yeah, exactly. All right, so now we've talked the basics of fantasy football. Let's get back into our our list here. 
So we have must-haves. We got sleepers. We got busts. We got, uh, I mean, I got keep your eye on. Uh, you got your don't drafts. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we got we got some stuff to cover here. It probably won't be the longest episode we ever do, but it'll probably be in the most informative one we ever do. Yeah, so you want to just kick it off with, like, sleepers or something? I see what you did there. Yeah, uh... Uh, so I, I, I got a few sleepers, uh, uh, my, my humorous sleeper is, and this one actually made more sense with more research, but, uh, Keelan Cole, he's a wide receiver for the Jaguars, uh, I think he could have a big year because the guy apparently, he doesn't watch TV, he doesn't watch Netflix, I'm not, he probably only watches game film, so, right then and there, this dude's gonna get better. With as his career goes on, has no use for entertainment. Just give me a ball, and we're gonna get better. It's training season, uh, and also you know Allen Robinson. He plays for the Bears now, so uh, there is no bona fide what number one wide receiver for the Jaguars. So everybody gets an increased role until someone steps into it and takes that number one receiver role. Yeah. So my thing is, that I I don't have like a sleeper for wide receivers, but I do think that if you look at, like, some of the depth charts, like, exactly as you were saying, how Keelan Cole is trying to basically vying for that number one spot, right, on the Jaguars, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you look at, like, even if you just look at the Giants, right, they have Beckham, and then who do they have? Sterling Shepard. Yeah, but I don't think he's going to... He did okay in his rookie year. But I don't think he's going to pan out to be that, like, number two. That, but so I think that another receiver could, on that team, can step up. Yeah, and it, it's all but, of that, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it's a watch list kind of thing. You have, to, yeah, you have to look for those teams who don't have their like full on number one, or maybe just only have a number one, and they're maybe looking for that number two because you're going to be drafting wide receivers you play two of them or more depending on the flex spot, right? So Mm -hmm. you're going to be looking for wide receivers. Just look for a team that you think this guy could break out on their team and they don't have a number one and two, right? So, well, fun story, because that actually works for running backs too, and I'll tell you why. It was a few years ago, I was just, I was in the middle of a draft and I was like, you know, all these running backs are taken and I still need another one. Uh, I wouldn't, like, no one's ever said, you know, like, I don't know who the Falcons running back is, so I looked up on the death chart, and it was Devontae Freeman in his rookie year, and Tevin Coleman, as one of the two were in his second year, um, and the other was a rookie, but they were playing, like, behind Michael Turner, and Michael Turner had left, so I picked up both at the end of, uh, the draft, and as you know, that was the year that Devontae Freeman went on a monster tear. And Tevin Coleman ended up being a pretty good uh, pickup, too. Yeah. The end. It's a good story. All no, the, kid, like, all the exactly kids are happy. What you have to look for is, like... But, see, the wide receiver and running back are, like, the two things that this works for. Because if you look at tight ends, like, it's basically up in the air. you got to make sure you're not drafting a blocking tight end. Because... You need the points, right? So, uh, no one, no one's better than drafting a blocking tight end in the third round. <laughs> oh, that that would literally like ruin you, though, because it's like, or, or would it? Or would it? Jack Doyle is not a blocking tight end, actually. I don't think he is. <laughs> is there any like real, true blocking tight ends anymore, though? Uh, I I mean I'm pretty sure they can all catch, but it's just what like if your team has like two tight ends, it's what do they put in for? Are they put in for the tight like running block, or are they put into you know chipping? I mean, I feel like in today's NFL, you either have a fullback or you have a blocking tight end, but you don't need both on a roster. Yeah, but I mean so, they still exist. It exists. It's. We live in an era where it doesn't exist heavily, though. 
Yeah, definitely. I agree with you. All right. So back to sleepers. Um, let's see. I think Mitch Trubisky. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, last year threw seven touchdowns, seven interceptions in 12 games. Not the greatest stat line, but, you know, he's a rookie. And to do it on a Bears team that didn't have a lot in terms of offense outside of Jordan Howard and I guess Tariq Cohen, um, he, he did okay. So now the front office, uh, they invested in putting some weapons around him. They got uh, Taylor Gabriel, Trey Burton, and Allen Robinson for him to target. So they got some good options there. He showed his potential, and um, seven touchdowns and seven interceptions, you know, it's growing pains kind of stuff. It's not going to last forever if he's a good enough quarterback. So it might be worth taking a flyer on. You don't have to start him week one, but you can put him on the bench, give him a little time to to see how it pans out. It's like a a sixth or seventh round pick, you know, maybe even later. Not even. Because if you pick up, like, uh, your normal quarterback is, like, if you pick up a really good one, like, top three, you're going to look mm-hmm. at, like, third round probably, right? So then yeah. if you look at the rest of the quarterbacks, they're probably not going until, like, the sixth, seventh round. So you really... Uh, yeah, okay, so let me... Trubisky, ninth round. Yeah, I, I would I would say that's okay. That's okay. Um, aside from that, like... Maybe even maybe even later because it depends on how many rounds you get. I mean, yeah, let's but say you got even twelve if you have rounds, to... you probably take a kicker and uh, a defense a little later than that. So there's not too much of a window there. Yeah, true. All right, and my other sleeper is uh, a big slumber one for uh, David Njoku, the tight end from the Browns. This guy is probably. He can probably do it with any quarterback because he's had to do it with any quarterback. Uh, Only his second year had uh, four touchdowns last year in essentially half a season when he came on. Uh, Six foot four inches comes with some big hype, but he doesn't have the injury risk as far as I uh, could tell in my research. So why why take a Gronk or, or a Jimmy Graham? When you could take a guy who is a little smaller, a David Njoku, who uh, opens up the field now that they have Jarvis Landry there too. Okay, I I can agree with that. Get him in in the fifth, sixth, or seventh round, because you're you're going to need to take a tight end a little sooner than you'd take your backup quarterbacks. Yeah, I would agree. I think you should be getting tight ends around like. Like the fourth to sixth round, I think yeah. is a good place. It, it, tight end is one of those positions where you can only carry one on the roster and not really because no yeah. tight end is going to be your flex. So no like way. they're interchangeable to, to some degree. Although I'd say the one that you draft when they are on their bye week, maybe you put them on the bench and pick up someone else. Yeah, uh, like, maybe cause... put like a wide receiver back on the uh, free agent pool. Yeah, because you can always pick up a flex wide receiver if your league is small enough, right? And, exactly. But really, I think as long as you're, if you're drafting like I don't know, like a Gronk or maybe an Ernst, you're gonna keep them. But if you're going down and drafting, I don't know, like like a Kyle Rudolph or a Walker, mm-hmm. you could probably drop them and pick up some somebody close. It's all no, about exactly. space. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I've said once, I'll say a million times, those injury risk guys at tight end, it, it, they're not worth drafting high. Oh, no, definitely not. Um, Let's see. All right, so what about your busts? So, okay, so my busts, um, so I'm not talking about bust as they, they're going to like just completely not matter. I'm saying they're not going to perform to their expectation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I have Devonte Freeman as like a bust. Cause I don't think he's going to, 
perform to what people think. Mm-hmm. Like most of the time, you'll probably I think most leagues will probably draft Raymond around the second or third round. But I think he's not going to be like your shoe in for always having your running back spot. I don't think he's going to perform to where some of the other ones that probably that should be taken around him will. Right, and I think it's worth noting that uh, you know while Tevin Coleman is a different kind of running back, uh, that probably isn't taking his job. The fact of the matter is they're both dynamic enough that like they will split reps more than they will uh, yeah. be like a third down back kind of situation. So yeah, it, it's worth noting that you know. Uh, oh, definitely. You know they're going to be sharing some spots. It's not like. Uh, you know, Le'Veon Bell and James Conner kind of thing. Like, you know, it's two pretty talented guys out there. Oh, yeah. But still, I think people, like, remember you said you drafted both uh, Freeman and... Uh, and Coleman, yeah. Coleman, right? And they both had pretty breakout seasons. But mm-hmm. I think people are still high on Freeman. And I think he's a great back, don't get me wrong. But, like, I think... If you're if you're already drafting a running back in like round two or three, mm. I don't think you should use your pick on him. I think there's a lot like other positions that you should get around there to more even out your roster than a mm-hmm. Freeman. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I would say the same thing. Of who is it? Um, geez, I'm blanking on it. I'm gonna have to come back to it, but. Uh, there, oh, uh, it's like some of these rookie running backs, or no, Dalvin Cook. Not Dalvin exactly. Cook. I'm okay, not exactly. I'm not exactly sold that he should be the number four ranked running back. Oh heck no! I think no. I think Delvin Cook is probably like a round two mid kind of running back. Yeah, I, I'd put him in the two, three, maybe even four fourth round yeah. like. Because A and, tore his ACL last year. So we yeah. don't know what he looks like on an NFL level. We're still kind of judging off okay. college stats. But Also, I'm not saying... Okay, so this is not like bust level, but people are rating Barkley so high. What does he have? One preseason game? Yeah, I mean, but Barkley, Barkley is... I, mean, um, I wouldn't take the... Like, so as much as I do... Ho- I'm a Giants fan, right? So I do hope he does well, like he really will. well. I'm he not will. taking the chance of drafting him in the first round, like a lot of like insiders no. are saying. I don't think you can trust a lot of rookies t- to be like that in the first yeah. round. Yeah, so and like, it's just like why would I don't think he's a first round material because not like, this year. You have a couple of good wide receivers that'll probably go towards the end of the first round, mm-hmm. and then in the second round you got like probably going to have Gronk go. You're going to look at more wide receivers and. You might get that one person at the end of the round that drafts a quarterback. Right. So. There's always one. Yeah. And so I just, as much as I think he's going to be a great player, I just don't know how much time it'll take him to ramp up to the NFL stage. Because I don't think he's just going to come in and be amazing, right? Right. Like, grab him in the third, fourth round, sit him for like two weeks, and then throw him in to give him those like couple weeks to get used to NFL. Right, it's not time yet for him to have like all the spotlight harnessed onto his shoulders. You know they're gonna do that anyway, but yeah. I mean it's the Giants. Yeah, I just mean like from a fantasy fantasy perspective, I don't think he cares about what people's fantasy outcomes are. Oh yeah, I mean most NFL players don't, but you get what I'm saying, like. Uh, you know, it's just not. Yeah, it's for not... a ro- for a rookie, it shouldn't even cross the mind. Yeah, it's just I I saw him being like late round one on a lot of like insiders mm-hmm. boards, I'd... and I just don't see it. I- I'd take him in the second round for sure, but yeah, not, I would not say second, like mid second, if he's still there, early third, take him, but mm-hmm. but not in the first round. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. But we'll see. I, I'm rooting for Barkley. I, yeah, I so think much. that he's the most marketable, kind-faced dude that the NFL's had in a long time. 
Yeah, so am I. I'm totally rooting for Barkley. Oh, yeah. It has nothing to be to do with being a Giants fan, though. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you want to go through some of your busts? Or? Uh, I would be more than happy to, Sean. So, let's see. I uh, Jimmy Graham. Uh, people love the Jimmy Graham move because everybody thinks that it's 2012 and, you know, uh, I guess for the first time since he, he got traded away from the Saints, he has the big gunslinger quarterback, no, no disrespect to Russell Wilson, but this is like open field, uh, passing game that like he had when he was playing for the Saints. So uh, a lot of people are going to say, look, you know. Uh, it, this is going to be like the return of his stats being huge and everything. I don't see it. it, it it's not like the Packers haven't tried to pick up tight ends in the past. Martellus Bennett, after he had a monster year at the Patriots. Uh, Jared Cook. Jermichael Finley. Like, you know, they they've picked up tight ends, like four tight ends in the last seven years. Uh, and they they keep having dud years that result in retirements or going to like a team like Oakland when they're rebuilding. So it's if it's not going to happen with those guys, get ready because it's not going to happen with Jimmy Graham either. I agree. I don't like. I mean, again, you said you have a gunslinger quarterback, right? Right. And let's not forget. Uh, the Packers have never needed one receiver to be successful anyway. I mean, Jordy Nelson's torn, or uh, he's gone now, but he, like, tore his ACL twice, and it didn't stop yeah. them from, like, spreading the ball to undrafted rookies. Yeah. So, so they mean, don't need Jimmy Graham to be successful, and they will spread the ball around. Yeah, and I think, because, uh, again, Rodgers will throw far, so most of his targets are going to be wide receivers. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, Jimmy Graham can do good, but he's not going to get the reps that a fantasy player wants out of him. Yeah, I agree. It, with it that. is what it is. Like, take it from someone who had Martellus Bennett last year. Like, I had to drop him by week four because he wasn't doing anything, and it ended up being a good move because, like. It just add dropping was better than having Martellus Bennett in the lineup most weeks. Uh, and my other one is Jameis Winston. Just you don't even need to be like a huge football fan to know. Just don't draft Jameis Winston. The dude's like, I get that like he enjoys football, but he's incapable of not doing stupid stuff off the field. He's suspended for the first three games of the season. And as much as he's shown that he has potential to be a good quarterback, he hasn't shown it consistently enough to actually so, harness it and become a good quarterback. So I just think that no matter how good the quarterback is, if they're missing for three weeks, you're not going to draft him. Correct. Well, because yeah, it depends on how many teams you have in your league. Yeah, but still, like, uh, it also depends on bench space and all that, but... You're just going to leave him there and then hope that his week of reps is going to be okay. But um, for my quarterback, um, I actually have one uh, that I don't think is going to do as well as people maybe project. And I don't. And I think Kirk Cousins mm -hmm. is going to disappoint a lot of people. I, I, I completely agree with that. I think that I just, Kirk Cousins has long been one of the more overrated players yeah, like, in the league yeah people are like putting him top 10 quarterbacks and i just think he's like so mid-tier mm -hmm. at this point like especially for fantasy points like i just don't expect really good points out of Kirk cousin yeah i don't either i think he's uh overrated overpaid overvalued the guy does a whole lot of nothing uh, yeah so there's my quarterback bust. All right, what else do you got? Uh, okay, so last one that I want to talk. Mm -hmm. Um, if I can. Okay, so last one I want to talk. Um, there's. 
so as far as uh, running back, I told I said uh, Devontae Freeman, right? But like, if we go down more, right? Like, I I don't think like Ajay is going to be a good pickup this year, like at all. I just don't see it. Um, can you say that one more time? Ajay, J Ajay. Yeah. I just. I don't see him being a good pickup this year. Like last year, he was pretty good for a for a pickup. Like I had him flex, mm-hmm. and he produced points. But like this year, I just don't see him getting to that level again. Because I think he, he's not the type of player that will do that. I think last year was just his peak. Well, um, I think that. He would be a, a decent, like, fourth back to add to your roster at the very end of the draft, but I wouldn't put him any higher than that. Yeah, um, but I think, I think running backs of his caliber will be available in your ad, uh, waiver wire for when you need the fourth back, right? Most of the time, it's like, what, two running backs and the flex? Yeah, I, I always... Uh, yeah, you go running back for the flex most weeks. Yeah, most weeks I do running back unless I need to like put a wide receiver in. Yeah, in the off chance, but like I do think that he will sink to like the average running backs, so where you will be able to pick up maybe that running back if necessary. Like say you have an injury that you don't necessarily need to draft a giant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. Okay, so you want to add anybody? Um, let's see. Uh, just buyer beware on those rookie running backs again, like. Oh yeah, and, yeah, but I think we both we both say that like again, Saquon Barkley. As much as I wanted to do really well, I'm not drafting him early, as a lot of the insiders say. Yeah, I don't know. Like, they're rookies for a reason. Like, it takes time to grow. Yeah. Alright. All right. So, moving on. We got our... Um, I think our don't draft lists are yeah. basically the same. So, mine is essentially like, you know, there's always a guy who's going to do some stupid shit that you just, like... You can't have that around. Like, the fantasy season is short. If football season, the regular season is 17 weeks, fantasy season is like 12 weeks. 12, 13, 14 weeks. So, you don't want to get stuck in the stupid shit. Like, when I tell you that DeAndre Hopkins is dating Iggy Azalea, that's some stupid shit. Just, no. Get out of it. it's, it's, it's It's like the girl who, like, looks cute but has a lot of red flags personally. You, a lot of baggage. Yeah, it's like there's nothing wrong with them and props to them for, you know, being comfortable with who they are. But, like, I'm not taking this flyer just yet. Somebody else can and somebody else deserves to and everybody deserves to be happy. But, no, I- I'm not taking that flyer right now. I'm I'm too... I'm too smart to take that flyer at this point in time. So, you know, Iggy Azalea, it doesn't take a lot to to know that uh, if you want to ruin your man and he's a wide receiver, all you have to do is go after the hands. So I'm not not messing with that drama. And uh, you know these celebrity couples, it does go down with drama. So football season is only so long, man. It's not yep. worth it. Uh, and LaShawn McCoy. Dude's injured most years. Uh, he's also dealing with some off-the-field issues, too, in that he may or may or have not allegedly like hired someone to go beat up someone. So, um, you know, just for both on-the-field and off-the-field reasons, let's stay away from LaShawn McCoy for yeah, this year. That, that's going to... 
like that has the potential to result in a suspension in your already short season, right? So well, suspension or not, Lashawn McCoy is going to miss time. It's just Lashawn yeah. McCoy. Yeah, and that too. Like I, I think he's going to get hurt. Like again, yeah. my don't drafts are exactly the same. Like DeAndre Hopkins for personal reasons, and Lashawn McCoy, he's going to get hurt, and he's involved in some things. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't understand why, like these guys can't just live normal lives. But it, I guess they they just love to do it. I mean, it comes with fame. Like you're you're kind of like spotlight. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you ask for it. You're just trying. Like even if you just try to be normal, everything you do is like blown up by a hundred. Yeah, and then then there's you just do something dumb and that just ruins you but okay it's a large risk reward it's yeah very we don't got somebody like plexico burst shooting himself very rarely does it pan out as well as you think it's going to like these celebrity couples very very rarely does it end up with like they're getting married or something it, hey. Like ninety five percent of the time, I want to say, it it just ends up with being like they're broken up. So yep, it's like why get into it if you have to. Mhm. Um. What else? Uh. Okay. So I'm also I'm not gonna say don't trap this guy, but I'm kind of I think he's gonna like be a small bit of a bust and i'm gonna say carson wentz uh i think there are a a lot better quarterbacks than him out there ahead of him that you should totally be able to get Mm -hmm. and again just like i don't like i don't see him performing this year yeah i could see that i think uh there's a bit of uh, a co- a quarterback battle, although it's Wentz's job to lose. Yeah, um, but you have to assume that like either either the pressure makes him uh, so if the pressure makes him do amazingly, that's good for him. But you always have that battle in the back of your mind, right? So right. Plus, him coming back from an injury, he might be rushing himself back and might get hurt again. So yeah, I don't like. I, I would stay away from Wentz because there are a lot of other quarterbacks whom either we're gonna talk about in a little bit, or whom we already know are just safer, more consistent pickups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. All right. So, mm-hmm. uh, you have anybody else? Nope. Nope. All right. So, um. Uh, so this is a, actually, I have a quarterback want to people to watch for, right? All right. Um, and what's his name? Uh, what's it? Pat Mahomes? I Patrick don't know how to Mahomes? say it. Yeah. I think he might have I, stolen this from my list. I, no, but I, I think know. this guy, like, give him, like, a couple weeks, he'll just produce. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I have him on my stash but don't start yet list because I think it's not the question of what he can do in terms of Mahomes. I think it's a question of what the Chiefs will do. What can they do around him? No, it's not that. It's that they just spent the last six years with Alex Smith uh, where they didn't have a very uh, heavy throw the ball down the field or even throw the ball kind of game plan. So if I understand that Alex Smith is a different quarterback, but, but if if they are still set on that same game plan, then Patrick Mahomes, as t- as it comes to a fantasy player, is reduced in terms of what he can do. But I don't like. I'm not saying draft him early, but oh no, of course like, not. I think he's a great mid tier quarterback. Like I think he's definitely above like a Wentz or a Cousins. Yeah. To draft, like he's, I think, again, I, I'm going to use those two because I don't think you should be drafting those guys unless you really have to. 
Yeah. Um, but I... Go, go I think he will, like, put up a good enough amount of points for where he needs to be drafted, like middle-of-the-pack quarterback. Yeah. Uh, I'd put him as a QB, too. Yeah. Uh, I, I like Jared Goff. I think Jared Goff could be in the same conversation. All right. Oh, I can agree with that. He he didn't he didn't play like garbage last year, and uh, in his first full season, he looked pretty damn good, in my opinion. Um, uh, I got one for your watch list though. It's uh, you know, I, I give the rookies a lot of flack, but I think Baker Mayfield. You don't draft this guy, you don't start this guy, but pick him off off waiver wire. <laughs> Yeah, it's a wa- it's a mid season waiver wire, if anything, uh, because oh, God. that that's pretty bold. Well, Baker Mayfield has such a passion for the game that I don't think that he can be unsuccessful at it. Like his emotional okay. and uh, his emotional drive to be the okay. best player on the field. I think that. He is what Cleveland needs, and I think he he's the best chance for Cleveland to succeed at the quarterback position for okay, years I, to come. I agree with you that he will, like, I think he is what Cleveland needs, but I don't think this year is Cleveland's year. Oh, no, absolutely not, but I don't. So, I think that he, the guy's just too driven to uh, not do well. But... I don't think there are enough supporting cast around him for him to reach a level where you'd play him in fans. Maybe not this year, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Next year? We'll see. Next year's a different I, story, because hey, I do hey. agree with you. He has the drive in everything. Hey, I said we'll see. <laughs> I just don't see it. Uh, well, y- you will see it. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, n- no need to hope. <laughs> no need to hope. Alright. Um, out here catching dubs. <laughs> so, anybody else you want to um, talk about? Saquon Barkley, number one overall. Just to piss off Sean. <laughs> yeah, you know that's not going to happen. Um, let's see. Chris Thompson, I think he could be a good bench bat running, running back. Um, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry is rated, uh, in this magazine, 26 among running backs. I think the guy's a lot better than 26. You might want to, uh, if you can sneak him into your lineup, go ahead and do it. I think Um, he's like, I actually think Derrick Henry is like a good max, like minimum flex running back, right? Yeah, exactly. I think he's he's like a round four type of guy. He's, He's got a lot of upside. Um, let's see here. Let's see, um... Jarek McKinnon, severely overrated. I don't know why he's ranked number 14 among running backs, it, unless it's a pure PPR thing. Uh, he's not yeah, He's so. not a big running running back, so um, let's see. Um, I know I know he's rated higher for PPR than he is not. Well, you would hope so, because otherwise that just doesn't <laughs> make any sense. These guys are experts because they can write on paper. Okay. Um... <laughs> Let's see, Donta Foreman for the Texans might be a decent thing if Lamar Miller doesn't pan out. Uh, you never know. He's uh, yeah. Lamar Miller's an up, getting up there guy. Um, Samaje Perrine for the Redskins did okay in a few games, but then he got hurt, so we'll see. I uh, wouldn't draft him just yet. Adam no, Thielen for wide receivers. Draft later. the dude. Adam Thielen came out of nowhere and he's not going anywhere anytime soon the dude was a former practice squad player who has slowly worked his way up through the organization i don't see him going down anytime soon no i think he's i think he's a pretty solid wide receiver Mm -hmm. like you're probably looking for a wide receiver yeah he should be available like fourth round probably alshon jeffrey made uh um put up the numbers he did in his first few years in chicago but seeing as Trey Burton and uh, some of those other guys left the Eagles, he is your number one in Philadelphia, and uh, Mike Wallace ain't going to cut it as a number two. So here's your chance to uh, 
you know, getting number one wide receiver uh, in, and not have to do it in the top two, three rounds. So. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I like Juju Smith-Schuster just because he can't get A.B. the ball all the time. Um, <laughs> let's see. What else? What else? What else? There's got to be more, that I tell you. Um, hey, how, how Paul, about we talk Paul about Richardson. something we haven't yet? Paul Richardson. I, I don't think he can rely on Doug Baldwin forever. Yeah, that's fair. Um, uh, Evan what Ingram. We'll, Ingram, I I think he'll do okay. I think that's a dude I replaced Martellus Bennett with last year. Did pretty damn good. Pretty good. Yeah, I think he's like pretty a mid tier tight end, right? Evan yeah. Ingram. Yeah, mid tier tight end. Mid tier because he's in in his second year. If it's his fourth year, I think he's a top five tight end. Yeah, I think I think you start to hear him around like the Ertz kind of the uh, Zach Ertz kind of like level. Yeah, in a couple years. All right, so you, you, I interrupted you. You said that you had an idea. Well, why don't we talk about like defense because. We haven't talked about it. Well, defense wins championships, but not when you're playing fantasy. Yeah. But then again, you don't want to, like, draft a defense that will just let you lose 10 points every game. Right. So so if you can, stay away from... Uh, actually, the Browns' defense isn't bad. It's just not good enough to win. Or it wasn't when there was no offense. Um, let's see. I don't know why this magazine only has offensive line stuff. I want defense. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, if you can't if you can't get one of like the better defenses in the league, mm-hmm. just like stay away from the teams that tend to give up a lot of points and win through like shootouts or yeah. Um. The Steelers' defense, I, I wouldn't trust them just yet. They're getting better, but they, they they play shootout games, so. Yeah. Uh, Saints' defense, probably going to yield some points. There, there's a chance that they don't. Like, they've got some good young talent, but I don't think they're there yet. Yeah, I mean, like, I definitely, like, I would just not look at the Raiders' defense. Just like throw it out. Yeah, yeah. Like throw it out. That I'd say the same thing with the Lions' you. defense. You don't need that. Yeah. Um, you just don't need it. Colts' defense. I don't think that they're there yet. The Colts. I mean, because they spent all their draft investing in trying to like protect Andrew Luck now. So, it was like mm-hmm. you know, they were so overdue on their homework for that that they forgot like that their defense sucks. But um, I don't think, I don't think they're the worst choice. Like I no, think we're just naming in, bad ones. It, yeah, but if you if you're in a league where it's like twelve defenses and you you end up drafting the Colts defense, it's not the worst. I don't think they're gonna lose you points every week. They're just not gonna make you many. What about the Dolphins defense? You're a big uh, Dolphins defense guy, right? No, <laughs> get that out of here. Uh, Seahawks defense. Uh, no, I think. I, I, they're too you much of a shootout type team. Yeah, you don't do that anymore. The, the Legion of Boom is Legion of Gone. Um, Car- yeah, like because I'd even yeah. I'd even be like on the fence about like the Packers defense because you know Rodgers just loves to throw the long ball and they score a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if the Packers like not to be not to be that guy, but the Packers are the ultimate. We have a white linebacker team because they just always do. A.J. Hawk, Clay Matthews, they draft based on the Packers' way instead of uh, a different kind of, like, where, you know, yeah. they draft based on system fit, which isn't always the most athletic guys. Yeah, and, like, uh, so I know how we're just crapping on defenses right now, but, like, a couple defenses I think will do, like, will actually, like, make you points week in and week out, like, I actually think the Rams' defense is gonna be good this year mm-hmm. for a, a fantasy perspective as of a defense. Like, I can see them making you like ten points per game on average. I think they have the potential to, but some of their guys are a little older. Like, 
I don't like the Akib Talib pickup because yeah, uh, okay. Akib Talib for a cornerback is a little older. Um, uh-huh. But I think that most of their guys have the potential to do it. I think that uh, Nadamika Suh is a little yep. too old to contribute on the level that uh, paper suggests that he can. Mm-hmm. So, But if they put it all together into one uh, and put the scheme fit on it and it works, then I think it, it can work. I just don't know just yet how good they'll be. Yep. Cause they could, okay, I can agree with that, but I do think I do. I would bet on them. So like, if if they were there towards probably like round nine or so, I don't know when most people draft defenses, mm-hmm. but that's around the time I'd be like, yeah, I could pick them up. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think that uh, I mean defenses are interchangeable enough that you can take a risk. Yeah, exactly. Like, and they'll still be like, even if you're in a 16 team league, like, oh, boo hoo, you got to deal with the Falcons defense. It's not going to lose you points. It's not going to gain you any. It's just, right. That's it's, okay. it's a mid tier defense. It depends on the opponent who they play. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing. Like, especially in the smaller leagues, like, nobody's going to hold on to an extra defense. So you can always drop bad defenses. Exactly. All day. We do it all the time, and we are pros. Yeah. So, um, what about kickers? Matt Prater. I Matt, agree Matt with that Prater. one. The dude kicked, not only did he kick 60 yarders when he was with the Broncos, he kicks 60 yarders when he's with the Lions playing in the Dome. The dude just has a boot on his legs. You don't need to go any further if you don't have to. Uh... If you're going for consistency, you get yourself a Goskowski, a Boswell, a Vinatieri. If you want a guy, yeah, even a Bryant is like yeah, still exactly pretty consistent. You know, a Justin Tucker. He, he, I mean, the dude's really good. But if you want guys who are going to be around, because Justin Tucker most of the time is going to be the first kicker to go, then uh, those are the other guys. I'd even throw Jake Elliott in there. Kicked the 60-plus game winner last year. Uh, Did pretty damn well for the Eagles in his rookie year. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. I can agree with that. Boom. Close book on that one. As far as, like, like you still have your mid-tier kickers, like Graham Gano and Bailey. They'll still do okay for you. Graham Gano sucks. Yeah, but he'll still do okay. (laughs) It's not like you're going to be relying on, like, freaking whoever the Giants picked up as a kicker. Like, if you ever have to drive the Giants, add the Giants kicker, it's just... Who is the Giants kicker? I have no idea. <laughs> Look it up, then. I think his name is, what, Aldrich Roses? Oh, Roses. Rosas or whatever? Rosas, yeah. I think he's good. Eh, I, I don't see it. Like, can we just pick him up? No, you guys signed him a while ago, I think. Eh. Claimed him off the waiver wire. Uh, Just like that like, bike. I mean, because I, I think, like, even if you had to, like, pick a Crosby, Mason Crosby, or... Crosby? He'll still be okay. Did somebody say Crosby? It is National Left-Handers Day. <laughs> <sighs> Fantasy hockey yeah. season right around the corner. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, trying to do one of these for hockey would take forever. <laughs> It would. I don't think that we have... Uh, we'd have to split it into a mini-series. Yeah. But I know... I want to play fantasy hockey this year. I haven't played it since 2013. I went out on top. I won that league. <laughs> it was a league full yeah. of cops, too. Yeah, but I mean... <laughs> I think that covers, like, defense and kickers yep. pretty well. Yep. I, I Just think... stay away from the bottom-tier teams. Actually... The kickers for the bottom tier teams might not actually be a bad idea per se because the bottom tier teams just means they can't get touchdowns a lot. Yeah, know your teams who can't make it to the end zone. And and it also depends. Do you have like minus points for missing field goals? Because that, that does change how you draft your kicker. I think the standard is minus one. Yeah, it depends. I've seen the leagues where like if they miss a longer field goal, 
that they attempted its worst. I mean, it certainly isn't better. Well, no, like, I've seen, I think it was, like, if they miss, like, a 40-yarder, it's, like, minus three. Or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. I don't, I would, I think the most I've ever played in was a minus two. Mm, okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but those are all things you gotta, like, adapt to your situation. Because all the kickers aren't gonna do terrible, per se. Just make sure they oh, don't yeah, they're, they're... pull their hamstring or something. Oh, yeah, hammy season. <laughs> so. Yeah. R.I.P. to Sean Sweezum. <laughs> May you rest in Canadian peace. Yeah. He's doing so well until that preseason game. <laughs> Alright. Anything else? No, I think that basically covers me for players I wanted to talk about. Yeah, me too. So, uh, good luck to everybody in their fantasy season. Happy drafting. And uh, you're all going to lose to us anyway, so... Be on the lookout yeah. because we can tell you who to draft, who not to draft. We're still coming for that ass. <laughs> All right. Catch you guys next week. Yep. Yeah, bye-bye.